nonsense. They're, they're collusive ESG nonsense. In fact, Bloomberg Law reported just a little bit earlier this month. You missed it. Ben wants to invoke the Sherman antitrust on Bud Light because they support gay people. Fuck yes, dude. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Fucking rugged anti-corporatist Ben Shabibo. Let's fucking go, dude. Finally. Fucking finally. That's what I'm talking about. Brother, this is the this is the dream, baby. Basic antitrust law. That's oh. the case made by the Texas Policy Center. They say the seminal antitrust law in the United States, the Sherman Act of 1890, prohibits every contract, combination, or conspiracy in restraint of trade or commerce. To protect consumers across the economy, courts have interpreted this law to prohibit unreasonable agreements in restraints of trade. Anti-competitive conduct enriches the few, members of a cartel, at the expense of everybody else, harming free markets, ultimately consumers through higher prices and reduced output. Agreements between competitors to fix prices, divide markets, or engage in certain forms of group boycott agreements prevent- Ben doesn't give a fuck when, like, uh, uh, antitrust laws are not utilized in any other facet of agricultural production that ends up inevitably uh, creating an environment that, it, that makes it so easy to raise egg prices, for example, or fucking the price of dairy or the price of meat, okay? But, like, the only time this fucking dipshit cares about antitrust is not on ISPs, which he has defended in the past as well, He's just, he only cares about it if he's, if it's like, you know, gay people uh, existing. Corporations are, are uh, pro gay people. That's awesome. And not even like pro gay people in general, just like pandering to gay people for approximately one month. Prevent competition on the merits and are therefore illegal. As former DOJ antitrust division head Megan Delrahim has written, anti-competitive agreements among competitors, regardless of the purported beneficial goal, are outlawed because they reduce the incentives for companies to compete vigorously, which in turn can raise prices, reduce innovation, and ultimately harm consumers. For example, there was a case called FTC versus Superior Court Trial Lawyers Association. A group of lawyers agreed to stop representing indig indigent criminal defendants in Washington, D.C. until the city government agreed to increase their compensation. The FTC took them to court. I love this. They argued that this was a per se illegal conspiracy to fix prices and conduct a boycott. The lawyers defended their agreement as a justified strike in the public interest to increase the number of lawyers who could represent those, those particular defendants. The Supreme Court rejected the defense. So you could easily see a situation in which there is a lawsuit against all of these companies, all of these organizations for their ESG nonsense, their, their collusive ESG nonsense. In fact, Bloomberg Law reported just a little bit earlier this month that insurers are now being forced to rethink their approach to climate change as they assess the risk of being sued for antitrust violations. Munich Re, the world's biggest reinsurer, recently backed out of the Net Zero Insurance Alliance, citing what it called the material legal risks it would face if it remained. The defection was then followed by two more high-profile departures, with Zurich Insurance Group AG and Hanover Re also leaving. All three said they will still pursue net zero goals, but not in coordination with the alliance. Because, again, they are afraid that they're going to be sued for collusion. So that would be solution number one. Solution number two is somewhat similar. That would be a share. This view of antitrust went out when Reagan got into office. The court now looks at consumer price benefit for the most part. I love how homophobia is going to roll back 40 years of conservative antitrust th thought. Yeah, no, it's not going to happen anyway. It is pretty funny, though, that like he is demanding. Again, antitrust law is perfectly applicable in AB InBev's case, okay? They have vertically and horizontally expanded and integrated to a degree where they maintain like almost every facet of like beer delivery and beer sales. Like they control all of it. Okay. And this reality exists in pretty much every part of your lives. Okay. You could absolutely utilize, you could absolutely utilize antitrust laws on like the overwhelming majority of mega corporations that that uh, control most of the market whichever whichever industry they're in whichever sector they're in okay and that is also but of course that never happens there's no uh, regulation there's rarely ever any antitrust regulation because our our current understanding of antitrust regulation is that as long as the prices are uh, the prices of goods and commodities are, remain low it doesn't harm consumers, so they don't give a fuck, right? Ben wants to make an argument that, like, I guess people are harmed uh, by AB InBev because they are they did a, a one-time uh, Dylan Mulvaney ad on Dylan Mulvaney's Instagram, which is awesome. 
if this little of a thing is like uh, getting Ben to just go back on all of his fucking free market values, I mean, great. I'm down. Fuck it. Let's attack. Let's attack these big corporations. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. Shareholder derivative claim. A shareholder derivative action is when shareholders basically say the corporate officers are breaching their fiduciary duties. Right, I'm bring Kai your fiduciary now. duty is to maximize the profitability and the viability of the corporation in which I am a shareholder. Your fiduciary duty does not involve doing the work of the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation or the PGLE or whatever ridiculous ESG organization you have decided to join. Their shareholder actions can include anything up to and including conflicts of interest between the corporation and insiders, wasting of corporate assets, executive manager or board member breach of fiduciary duty. The law is going to be a solution to this. And the law will also be a solution in terms of legislation. It's one reason why Republicans are going to actually have to win. You know, there's no substitute for victory because Joe Biden sits in the presidency right now and President Biden has basically vowed that he was going to veto any ESG rule. You'll recall it was not all that long, it was March, when he rejected a Republican proposal to prevent pension fund managers from basing investment decisions on factors like climate change. Of course, because he's literally encouraging all of this. The House GOP tried to override that Biden veto. They just didn't have the votes to do it. The override failed on a 219-200 vote along party lines. But if Republicans were to win the House and win the Senate and win the presidency, they could actually pass a law to ban ESG investing, which would be necessary in order to restore competition in the marketplace. Also, presumably, the FTC could look at things like collusion if it were not ruled by members of the left wing. But this is going to have to stop. Because what we're watching here is not merely, you know, the, the press wants to portray this as just a shift in generalized American public opinion. That's not what's happening here. What's happening here is a cram down, again, from the highest levels of our culture. Okay, in just one second, we're going to take a look at the weird alliance that is now forming between Andrew Cuomo and, and Donald Trump. It's very, very strange. First, abortion is the leading cause of death among infants in the United States and on planet Earth. Sadly, with the abortion pill accounting for over 50% of all abortions, babies' lives are even at great. All right, that's it. Finally. I found them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Uh, in Ben's capitalistic world, shouldn't he be rallying against ISPs as more competition would give him more viewers and customers for D Daily Wire? No, because Ben has to Ben has to hand it to the fucking corporations no matter what. Oh, I saw this. Okay, so this Tic Tac is this one, I think. Trigger warning, Roseanne Barr. Actually, you know what? Let's open that. Let's watch that first. I'm just wondering. This is Roseanne Barr. What the heck is in our water supply? What the heck is in our oxygen supply of the metallic oxide salt that create a rainbow effect in a sprinkler? No. Dude, this is a meme. I've made this joke. But I made this joke. This is a joke that I made. What the fuck? Wait. No fucking shot. Of the me metallic oxide salt that create a rainbow effect in. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's like this is an old video. I was I, I I thought like I thought it was like literally okay. It's an old sound from 2007 with the fact that it's now this lady, but 100, uh, yeah, 100 million times crazy. Holy fuck, dude. It's like, what are they putting in our water supply? They're woke. And what the heck is in our water supply? What the heck is in our oxygen supply of the me metallic oxide salt that create a rainbow effect in a sprinkler? I love this. This is like, I love that this is, uh, you know, like a funny meme from 2007, except this is like genuinely, this is like genuinely a, a part of the broader conservative movement. Like this is, this is how conservatives operate now. It's awesome. What is oozing out of our ground that allows this type of effect to happen? Not just around our sun and our moon anymore. Everywhere we look. The visible spectrum is rainbows. This cannot be natural. We all know it wasn't something that happened 20 years ago. 
But now it's happening now. We as a nation have got to ask ourselves, what the hell is going on? Oh, she's right. She's so right. We as a nation have to figure out what the fuck's going on. What what the hell is up with light uh, it reflecting off of fucking uh, uh, water and, and uh, you know. Please ignore this woman. She's very nice but suffers from a mental illness. She needs help, not harassment. You're joking, right? This is like a grandma from 2007. She's probably fucking dead, okay? What is oozing out of our ground? This is why homeschooling is a terrifying prospect for the record, okay? Uh, and wokeness uh, is introduced. Project, I know, here's the leash if you want to take her over the leash. Huh? Here's her leash if you want to take her over the leash. Kaya, sit. Uh, uh, don't pet her when she jumps up. Kaya, sit. Get back. Kaya, Kaya, no.